Hello everyone, this is Benji from Stock Hours, and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up and open an interactive broker's account. So to start, you're going to go ahead and go to their website, and you're going to just open an individual account. You're going to just fill out the information. Um, you're going to need your social, your employer's name and address, your phone number, and any bank accounts to fund it. You're also going to need to be at least 21 years of age to open the account. Here I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my subscriptions that I have for interactive, for trading options. We can log in here. And you can always call them for this as well. But you're basically going to go to your user settings and then you're going to go to market data subscriptions. And then you can pause it here and look at the screenshot of these. And I'm also going to go ahead and show you guys in depth on the ones I got. So for quote bundles, I'm going to do US equity and options add on streaming bundle, US security snapshot and futures value bundle nothing under indices, nothing under level one, under level two, and scroll down, you're going to get IEX depth of book, NASDAQ option market, NASDAQ total view open view, NASDAQ or NYSE Amex options, ARCA options, ARCA book, open book, and then that should be it there for you and you'll just hit continue and then every first of the month you'll get billed for your subscriptions for the individual account it should be about $110 I also wanted to go over the financial information for making your interactive brokers account I kinda lied about some of this information um, but it, it's true now since I've been in the stock hours um, chat but just make sure you're 21 years of age and this is the information you need to put in for your financial information to make sure you get approved for options trading okay so now we are officially in the platform itself I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you guys all of the windows I have here this isn't exactly how I would have mine laid out um, I'll go ahead and put some screenshots of how I have my setup on my desktop and I might even put a little clip at the end of the video on how I chart and trade everything on my monitor and my two vertical monitors but for right now I'm just gonna go ahead and go over all the windows I use um, for interactive and then I'll go over some key settings so first things first I have this window right here this is the main window for interactive and I'll have my option chain right here um, and I'll actually have this linked to a watch list or a like a um, yeah watch list tab so I have two watch lists here and I'll normally have one for TOS as well I'll use the TOS one to switch between charts I'll use one of these to switch between level two I have it labeled right here and then I'll also use one of these to switch the option chain so like I can just switch the option chain like right here you know just whatever the ticker is so I can quickly switch and I'll normally have these three watch lists laid out in a vertical layout so I can just boom 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 if I need to switch really quickly and then this one right here will clearly change the level two over here so whatever we need it to be um, right here is our book trader um, I have these custom buttons set and I have it set up like this um, I'll go ahead and show my settings for book trader real quick here okay if you guys want to go over them or or you know copy them or whatever you need to do basically have some stuff unchecked here to make it look cleaner for just the stuff I use um, I have this set to number of things to display 150 but I don't even really use that because the ladder is delayed um, a big thing you want to uncheck is display auto scroll countdown after scrolling um, yeah this should be this should be it um, I, I've checked remember arm state between trading sessions so if you want to keep it armed or you know you want to uncheck it or whatever you want to do and you can you can set that here and this is the arm button right here so whenever that's checked your order will get transmitted instantly 
Um, I'll go ahead and go over my button, my buttons here real quick. Okay, so this is what it looks like here in the settings. Um, I just have the standard buy market, buy um, sell, sell market buttons right here. I have a flatten button and a flatten button basically mark, market sells all your open positions. So then you don't have to change the quantity in book trader. So it's kind of like a panic sell button. And then I have a cancel all button. So if I have any orders pending or not getting filled or just sitting there, I can click that really quickly and cancel my order and replace it or, you know, sit out whatever I need to do. Now I have this buy limit button and this is something we talk about in the chat a lot. Um, it's a slippage order and I love these, especially for the sell. So my buy one, um, I'll normally always buy market if the spread's good. And you can see up here on book trader, I added the spread to this little bar right here. So you can see the contract spread in real time. You can see the contract bid and ask or the stock bid and ask, whatever you have in there. Um, so these are my settings for the button. You basically set the action to buy um, the order type to limit. Um, you set this to bid and you put 1.5% right there. And then you make sure you transmit order instantaneously. Um, for the for the algorithm stuff, you can either have it on default or smart, whatever you want to try out. I've been trying out smart recently. It's been working okay. But other than that, I've, I've done um, default from the beginning. Um, now this is the one that's really the banger of a button. Um, the minus 1.25%. So as long as it breaks, we get the breakout. You're up as it's pushing upwards. If you hit this, you're almost guaranteed to get out and, you know, get a good fill. So it's just, just like the other one we set at the sell limit. But this one, we put it on the ask. So that's going to be the highest price possible on the contracts. And it's going to be minus 1.25% from the highest price. I have the 1.25 and a 1.75, depending on how big the spread is on the contracts. Um, I highly recommend those buttons. Um, right here under this, I'll have a level two right here, and I'll go ahead and show you. I have the level, I have the book trader, and this level two window all linked to this watch list right here. So, like, if I click one of these, I'll change it in the in the um, in the option chain, and then when I click a contract, it'll put the contract in this level two and in book trader. You can see now the spread on the contracts right here. Um, but right here, the, the level two for the contracts is essential. I, I seriously love that, and I highly recommend you putting that on your screen to help you get a judge of where the contracts are at. I actually like that a lot more than the book trader ladder. Um, the selling, like one of the biggest selling points for IB is the level two, which is right here, and you can see walls very easily. So you can see like right here at 3390, we got a nice little wall here. I color coded mine. Um, I'll go ahead and show my settings for that real quick. But yeah, I just, I ended up trying it colored and I ended up really, really liking it. And it's just right here. I have the text at the yellow and then blue, pink, um, and green. You can set it to whatever colors you like. Those are just the ones I've found that I like. Also linked with the contract is this little window right here. And this is the times and sales for the contract as well. I don't really use it as much, but I just like to have it on my screen just as a reference point. Then I'll also have this window right here. This is gonna be your order window, so you can see whatever trades you took. And then we're gonna have my monitor tab right here, which will show your positions, your P&L. Okay, so this is gonna be my second time recording this part. The first time I did it, my laptop just completely crashed because it couldn't handle um, iMovie, Interactive, and OBS. So just a quick tip on the monitor tab here. If you right click where it says Unrealized P&L, you're going to click this down arrow. You're going to go to display both and click display both. And then you'll be able to see your price percentage and all that right here on the monitor tab. You can see my laptop is starting to lag once again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through the important settings on interactive brokers. Um, start with general. Main one here is going to be your memory allocation in megabytes. You can set that to whatever you're comfortable with. It's higher on my desktop because I have 64 gigs of RAM. This is just the default on my laptop. The next one under messages, there's going to be a main one here. I'm not sure if it's selected by default, but you want to make sure it's unchecked and it's going to be market order confirmation. Going to make sure you uncheck that here. Um, 
You go to sound manager, you can change the voices and all that, have some fun with it. Um, a big one here, I'm gonna go to presets. This is like one of the main settings that you need to make sure you have. And then options. Okay, so we have this order window right here. Um, it's just something that pops up when you click the contract sometimes. Whatever you have this quantity set to, so I have it set to 3,500. If I click a certain contract on the option chain, this quantity right here will update um, to the amount that I'm trying to buy. So like I'm trying to buy 4K worth and the contracts are 1,000, it'll instantly put four there. It doesn't update in the book trader, which is trash, but I just use that as a reference to how much I should go in with. If you scroll all the way down here, we get to some precautionary settings. By default, the price percentage is set to three. And that means if you try to fill 3% out of the contract spread, it'll give you a pop-up and you basically won't put your order through. So you want to make sure um, with our type of trading where we scalp options and stuff, you want to make sure you up that to 10%. Basically, that means it will not fill you more than 10% out of the spread. So basically, you can't get filled more than like 10% down with this setting unless you click that confirmation window. Um, the total value limit here Basically, that's going to um, allow you to, like, if you're going crazy one day and, like, you know, you set the wrong number or whatever of contracts and it's way too much, it'll actually stop you from placing that order to whatever limit you, you put here. And it won't let you go over that limit. Um, that's pretty much it for these interactive broker settings in here. I haven't really messed with the charts. Um, I use the charts on TOS. Uh, to be honest, I don't really like them on interactive. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show a video on my phone after this to show you guys how I have my setup on my actual desktop computer so you can get a good idea and understanding of that. Um, for stocks on, under presets, um, I just have it set to one right here. Um, there was one setting. Yeah, so like if you're trying to place an order um, pre-market or post-market after, you know, before 9.30 or after 4 o'clock, you can check the setting and then you can trade outside of regular trading hours. And that's pretty much it as far as my IB settings go. Um, one last thing, let me explain to you this tab right here. This is the news tab. Basically, you link it to whatever... Um, watch list you have set and then you can literally get all your information here for all those stocks that you have in your watch list and then there's a just amazing setting in here um you see i have it set the portfolio watch list and then i have all companies and all quote monitors and watch lists so that's any of the watch lists i have it'll, it'll pull from there or you can set a custom list there and also the one under that so plus news relating to competitors that's huge so let's say tesla gets some news or, or not Tesla, but let's say you have Tesla in your watch list and then Neo gets some news, Tesla's competitor. You'll get that in your news tab, um, which is just awesome. So this will help you get a bunch of extra news that you might not have seen if you didn't have the competitors. And that's very helpful to get fast news. So that's pretty much it for my interactive broker settings. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go ahead and go and show you guys my full desktop setup and now I have it actually set up. Okay, so this is my trading desk. This is where all the magic happens. This is my PC setup. Um, there's the PC right there. Um, it's just an i7 with a 3080 Ti. Um, I got oh, two whiteboards my wonderful girlfriend made me. I go over these every day. These are just common mistakes that I've made. Um, I have the Herman Miller chair right here. My laptop for when I travel. Um, my journal here which I write down all my trade ideas and go over my trades and then I have some books down there that I read and then um so this is the Samsung Odyssey right here it looks dope this is where I have my charts I have eight charts here I have ES and NQ and then I have whatever stocks I'm looking at that day on the one minute this is my main screen here I have one big chart this is a big one minute chart I use times and sales on TOS just because I like how they're color coded, color coded. Then I have Book Trader right here, um, level two, the contract level two, and the order entry window. 
Um, I literally just used the order entry window to, to let me know how many contracts to get. So you can see when I select, it changes in real time, depending on how many contracts I need to get. Hang on, let me show you right here. So like if I wanted to do the 670s, it'll automatically update it to 18 or 17, I mean, or if I click those, it'll do 43. Um, yeah, so I have my main chart, the book trader level two. I have my three watch lists. This one controls the chart. This one controls the level two, and this one controls the option chain. So whenever I'm looking to play something, I have to switch it on all three watch lists to fully be able to trade. Then I have the discord up here. Um, just banger signals from Nor, as always. Um, we got the monitor tab right here, the um, order window right here, the option chain, the times and sales for the contracts, and the news tab I was telling you guys about. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, I'll make sure to get to all of them. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.